G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel in a slightly different setting today because I just recorded my previous video and the sun is glaring at my face. I haven't edited the video yet, so if that turns out shit, I'm sorry. So today's video is a little bit of a different one. We're going to be looking at some of the players that didn't find homes in the recent trade period and are also without a contract. Now, some of them that I'm gonna mention in this video have formally been delisted and can, in theory, be picked up as a delisted free agent to, with any other club. Then there's a few players in limbo who uh, were linked to trades or potential trades, or maybe even they weren't, and uh, simply have not formally been delisted, but also don't have a contract with their new club. So the players in that particular group will either need to sign a contract with their new club, or they will be formally delisted after the trade period and can then sign as delisted free agents. So the purpose of this video is to look at what talent is potentially on offer to other clubs that have not re-signed with their new clubs and you know which ones are the best ones and or have there any been any links to uh, existing clubs at the moment. Now I've compiled a list of like, I don't know, eight to 10 players or something like that uh, that I think are probably worthy of finding spots at new clubs. Uh, but I suppose as always, I will welcome your opinions in the comment section below. Let's start with the group of players that do not currently have a contract with their existing club, but have not formally been delisted because Orazio Fantasia is actually one of them. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Orazio Fantasia, he started his career at Essendon, moved to Port Adelaide on a three-year contract three years ago that is now at the expiry point and uh, had a good first season there. He played 20, uh, sorry, played 15 games and kicked 28 goals and looked like a shrewd piece of business from Port Adelaide. I believe his second season, 2022, missed a lot of it through injury. I think he might've played one game and got injured in that game. I'm not sure. Or actually, he played as an unused sub. So no, it didn't really count. Regardless what the specifics are, he has only played three games for two goals since that 28-goal season in 2021. On the plus side for him, you know, we know he's talented. He's played 99 games. He is 28 years old. So it's got to be to a club that's probably looking to uh, play and improve their team in the here and now. Probably doesn't make sense for some rebuilding clubs. Uh, but one club that he was linked to was GWS. Now, there was rumored that he hid two of their facilities or had flown there to meet with them. I'm not too sure exactly what it was, but either way, a deal didn't happen. And I suppose that's potentially GWS saying, well, we don't need to trade for Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide's also very busy right now with Asava Radigalia. Uh, we'll just sign you as a listed free agent. So that's one that I think could come to fruition in the next couple of weeks or days before the draft. Then there's Jeremy Sharp, another player that I have mentioned on this channel uh, a little bit in this trade period because it's one that I was expecting to hear more about uh, going into this trade period. But a 22 year old from Western Australia, originally Originally, and he has played 23 games for the Gold Coast Suns. Little profile on him, he's about 189 centimeters, which is you know a pretty above average size for a midfielder. And he's kind of like an outside leaning midfielder and wingman. And I think he's played on half back flank a, a little bit as well. We didn't see Jeremy Sharp at all this year. Last year, he was rumored to try to get a trade to Fremantle uh, through that trade period. It didn't get done by the deadline, or I'm not sure the exact specifics, but there was interest. It didn't happen, he was contracted. Now he's out of contract, but he also didn't play football this year. So it's not that he had a bad year. He played in Gold Coast, very good uh, VFL team that won the premiership and he is a VFL premiership player. And considering Fremantle's outs this year and the continued loss of experienced players, I can see them renewing their interest in Jeremy Sharp. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jeremy Sharp to Fremantle. The reason I don't mention West Coast is just that every link so far has been to Fremantle. He's from the Fremantle area. That's probably more likely than West Coast. We can talk about the ruck combo of Scotty Lysett and uh, Sam Hayes at Port Adelaide as well, two players that are now completely in limbo. And I believe, uh, yeah, both out of contract. If I haven't researched that correctly, forgive me, but I'm sure that Scott Lysett's definitely out of contract and I believe Sam Hayes is as well. Now, Port Adelaide have gone and recruited two uh, ready-made Ruck in uh, rucks in Soldo and uh, Jordan Sweet as well. So where does this leave these guys? I know that uh, Scott Lysett was uh, apparently considering retiring, but uh, deep in the trade period, we also heard he was fielding some interest from Victorian clubs looking for a mature ruckman. Scotty Lysett's like 31. We did see him decline this year, but crazier things have happened, and I've seen worse ruckmen get picked up uh, in the latter stages of their career to fill a hole as well. So Sam Hayes is another one that is, uh, I think, considered one of the better rucks that isn't getting a game, uh, but obviously not rated by Port Adelaide enough to to keep him on their list. So I'm not sure exactly where his development sits. He did play the last three games this year, and he had 10 hitouts, 34 hitouts, and 12 hitouts. So a little bit of a mixed bag, but again. 
a Ruckman out of contract uh, that could get picked up for free makes sense because we do see a bit of a merry-go-round for key position players each offseason. So I wouldn't be surprised if Sam Hayes gets an offer somewhere else. He could get a one-year deal at Port. I'm not too sure. But again, he's going to be behind two Rucks that are probably ahead of him. Another one is Hayden Crozier, uh, one that was a uh, player about whom there were some rumors that he was going to get traded from the Western Bulldogs to Carlton. This was likely going to be a very cheap deal. I do remember reading an article that suggested the, uh, that Carlton might even wait for him to be delisted to be picked up as a delisted free agent. So he is a, well, he's going to be 30 next year. I believe he's born on Christmas Day or something like that. A weird fact to remember. But he played just the four games this year. Uh, he played rounds two, three, four, and then again in round 24. And it doesn't look like he's going to get a new contract at the Bulldogs, but Carlton have been linked to him as an experienced sort of small defender there. So again, purely because I've read articles about it and also the perceived lack of depth in this year's draft, I wouldn't be surprised to see Carlton pull the trigger on Hayden Crozier. So that's the players that have not formally been delisted. We don't have an answer and, and a lot of that is speculation with some you know educated guessing in there as well. Uh, now we'll talk about some of the players I'll rattle off that have been actually delisted by their clubs and can automatically sign as a list for free agents. So there's a couple from Collingwood. Uh, one is Trey Rusco. He's a 193 centimeter sort of undersized key defender, probably more of a third tall defender. Uh, he's played 18 games for them. And I think in his first season, he played something like uh, 11 games. I didn't actually write it down, but he, he was present in that Collingwood team. And then as Collingwood have gotten better, he's fallen by the wayside. So played just the one game this year, obviously out of favor, formerly delisted by Collingwood. There was a room that he toured Eagles facilities early this year, and he is from the East Fremantle area. So that one could happen. Another one that Collingwood delisted that has been previously rated somewhat is Trent Bianco. He's played 23 games, uh, but again, another player who's just played one game this year and subsequently delisted. He is a, well, at times I swear he's played in defense. I think he started his career as a small forward as well. One thing that's always been known about Trent Bianco is uh, his really, really good foot skills. So there is some AFL talent there. There's AFL traits at the very least, and and uh, we could see him get picked up by perhaps a team that's looking for an injection of um, some young or sort of semi-mature and young talent. And I think Richmond is probably one team that I think are probably looking for some young reinforcements without having to actually give them a two-year contract. They can give them a one-year contract. They've lost a lot of experience. Maybe uh, Richmond sniffing around some of these DFAs. Then there's Toby McLean, uh, who is a player that I kind of forgot about, but used to be really good and uh, has subsequently been delisted by the Western Bulldogs. He's a premiership player, um, and he, in t as recently as 2018, he was averaging about 24 disposals a game. I suppose that's not recent, but since then, he's really fallen out of favor. He's also done two ACLs in that time. I think it was two within three seasons, uh, which is really unfortunate because I remember Toby McLean as a pretty damn good player. This year, he played uh, six games for eight disposals a game. One of them was an, as an unused substitute, which still counts as a game. And uh, four of those games, he was either subbed on or off. So it's probably not a fair representation of him. He was burning it up in the VFL, if I'm not mistaken, this year. And uh, there was a game where he had 45 touches against Richmond in the VFL. So uh, how old is he? He's probably about 26 or 27. Uh, I didn't actually write it down, but he's around that range. So potentially a club looking for some experienced maturity to, to bolster their list. Then there's Riley Bonner from Port Adelaide, who it wasn't that long ago was a mainstay of their best 22, or at least it seemed that from the outside. A running half back with a really good laser left boot at times. He's 26, he's played 93 games. So a lot of experience there. In 2022 and 2021, those were his best seasons. He averaged you know, around the 19 to 20 possession mark, kind of an unaccountable defender with good foot skills that can really hurt other teams. And uh, this year we saw him fall off a little bit. I think he just played the 11 games for 13 disposals. Again, he was subbed off three times as well, which is starting to hurt, you know, players' averages, this sub rule. Obviously, in and out of the side, Port Adelaide had a squeeze this year. Port Adelaide were a good team. I think this is a player that could go to another team and play a half-decent role. This Jack Bartel from St. Kilda, who, you know, it always seemed like he was pretty highly rated, but now finds himself delisted from the St. Kilda Footy Club. 23 years old, played 22 games, and again, has a little bit of a profile. He is about 189 centimeters and a big-bodied inside mid, pretty clearance-focused guy. Uh, in round Round one, he had 16 disposals, seven tackles, and a goal. So a solid performance in round one, and he was dropped after that. After that, he made a handful, I think four substitute appearances over a couple of months and got dropped a few times and, and fell out of favor. And fair enough, the Saints improved and they left him behind. But as a mature stopgap sort of inside mid, he could go to a young side and potentially add some depth. So that's one option. Then there's Port Adelaide's Bryn Tickle, and actually another Port Adelaide Ruckman that now finds himself on the outer. So they're just refreshing their list, interestingly. Uh, but Bryn Tickle has been formally delisted. Now, Bryn Tickle was taken 
at, uh, I forget what peak, but he was taken in the mid-season draft in 2022. So he's played a year and a half on their list. He is 24 years old and just played six games. But I think there's some some promise there with Tickle. Uh He is 204 centimeters, a really good size for a ruck. Um, and again, hasn't been in the AFL system long. So in theory, has a fair bit of development left to go. He averaged 21 hitouts when he did play this year and he had 34 against West Coast. Now, West Coast doesn't have the strongest ruck division in the competition, but for him to do that, even against Bailey Williams, shows a, a level of promise there, I would say. So another young ruck potentially that could interest a few clubs, potentially even the WA clubs. And finally, there is Brody McLaughlin from the Gold Coast Suns. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I had never heard of this guy until a few weeks ago, but I did a little bit of research and that's what I'm here for. So he's about to turn 25. Uh, so he's a mature key forward. He was a supplementary list player this preseason. So Gold Coast uh, evidently had spots on the list. He was a train on player and they signed him to their list and he didn't play a game. A little bit undersized, he's 193 centimeters. But again, like, uh, like Burgess, he and Burgess actually tied for the most goals in the VFL this year with 51. So if there's, if there's a knock on him, just looking at his profile, 193 centimeters is a little bit shy for a, a true key position height, but he is a proven goal kicker at state level. And the, actually the only reason I'm including him in this video is because I have read that Fremantle were interested in signing him. They're constantly looking for goal scoring options. He has been formally delisted, and uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see Fremantle sign him up as a delisted free agent if they were indeed interested. But anyway, guys, that is my take on probably the best talents that are on offer past the trade period and obviously not including the national draft. So those are a few options for clubs to bolster their depth. As always, I'm sure I've missed something. So let me know in the comments what you agree with and what you disagree with for a start um, and anyone I've missed potentially from your club that you think is worth a shout. But as always, guys, I appreciate your support on the channel. appreciate you watching the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.